the World Alliance for Citizen Participation, and we chat to him now. Uh, good afternoon, Mandeep, and thank you for your time on the PM News Desk. Thank you. Uh, look, there was a great deal of expectation on post-apartheid era South Africa to be a vociferous leader in the civil rights arena. Uh, is this an expectation we are adequately meeting, Mandeep, uh, at this point? We've had cases that have muddied our image to some extent. I'm talking about the controversial issue over the Dalai Lama's visa, the Andres Tatana case, and Marikan, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the struggle and South Africa was a major recipient of international solidarity. Yes. Many governments, many leaders took principled stands against the apartheid regime. And they supported South Africa's interests of the, the, of the people of South Africa, despite it may not being in their short-term economic and political interests at that time. And naturally, now that South Africa is in a new dispensation, it's a democratic country, there was a lot of expectation from South mm. Africa to be this human rights leader. Mm. And I think South Africa has not been able to live up to that, to that reputation, that expectation that, th that, that was Tell there. Tell us why. I think what's happened is that it's happened, firstly, there's a crisis, there's leadership issues. I think if the leadership really believes in human rights values, it believes strongly in them, mm -hmm. then it takes a principled stand mm -hmm. on those issues. And it, and, and, and it, and it takes the country forward. Mm -hmm. Then there's also the issue of South Africa being caught up in its own economic interests. Mm -hmm. And going away from the constitutional values, the values of the struggle, the values the that embody, values, exactly. Yes. All right. Uh, South Africa got a relatively poor score record score in the latest Human Rights Watch report uh, that assesses social and economic rights. Now, two factors come up, like you've mentioned, inconsistency on the foreign policy side when it comes to human rights, and then the police handling mm -hmm. of rioting crowds, uh, a shortfall that surely has to be addressed. Uh, but this really speaks to allegations of police brutality uh, and the underlying uh, grievances of government. Uh, perceived failure uh, to fulfill these basic social and economic rights? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not just Human Rights Watch. Mm -hmm. There are a number of South mm -hmm. African organizations, a number of South African activists who echo these same things. All right. And, you know, in two days' time, we are going to be celebrating Human, Human Rights, rights Day. Day. Yes. It's, th it's the anniversary of a very sad day, the Sharpeville Massacre. Yes. And what is hanging over us at the moment? The memory of the Marikana Massacre. Mm -hmm. Where is accountability? And we also have protests that are happening all of the time because, uh, because South Africa is also considered one of the most unequal countries in the world. There are issues related to governance. There's a very uh, low level of uh, f uh, faith in, 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 the, in the lack of corruption in, in, in among state officials. And this is all leading to protests. And the police are still reacting in many times according to the old methods that they practiced. Using, using lethal force, using disproportionate excessive force against protesters. Mm -hmm. And this in a democratic country is untenable. All right, let's talk about gay rights for a moment. Mm -hmm. How serious is our country about protecting these rights? We do seem to be walking a very fine line between strong constitutional commitment mm -hmm. to protecting these kind of rights, but we have to balance this mm -hmm. with uh, solidarity to a largely homophobic rest of Africa. Mm -hmm. We know 38 African states out of 55 mm -hmm. criminalize homosexuality. Now, uh, we also need to be cognizant of the mm -hmm. fact that Pretoria reg uh, regards Uganda mm -hmm. uh, as as a key ally in mm -hmm. seeking peace in the Great Lakes region. Uh, but one would have expected a more robust response from mm -hmm. the South African government when it came to the uh, anti-gay bill in Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we saw was very much a quiet sort of diplomacy, rather. Yeah. Yes. I mean, look, you know, people might use different justifications, but let's be very clear. Yes. Gay rights is a discrimination issue. Mm -hmm. It's somebody is being discriminated just because who they are. Mm. And I think on, on that basis, we expect a country like South Africa, which has this strong constitutional commitment to recognizing the rights of everyone, irrespective of sexual orientation, to be playing a more positive role. Mm. South Africa's record in the international sphere has been patchy. You know, it's been yes and no. I mean, I would say that South Africa supported a, a resolution on sexual orientation and gender identity at the Human Rights Council last year, mm. and which is very good. But 
their support has been wavering mm. at times. Mm. And uh, but, but, but to its credit, the South African government was the very first one in the mm -hmm. world uh, to prohibit discrimination based on sexual mm -hmm. orientation. Uh, and we do have one of the most progressive mm -hmm. constitutions uh, that even legalizes mm -hmm. same-sex marriages. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. that commitment has to be realized at home. We still hear of cases of people, of violence, people being targeted because of their sexual orientation. And the police, the law enforcement agencies, the criminal justice machinery and political leaders need to speak out against these sort of attacks that happen. And that needs to happen much more. Mm. Uh, Mandeep, let's quickly speak about the case of the 22-year-old Frederick Ngubane and his fight for permanent residency in South mm -hmm. Africa. It really threw open the debate of statelessness right now mm -hmm. in the country. Uh, and statelessness is not new. It's not a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 million people across the globe uh, are in this situation. Uh, but it remains a human rights challenge uh, that has not been given the attention it deserves. Why is this? I mean, absolutely. I mean, the, the challenge is we live in a world of these artificial boundaries. These yes. are created. These are not real boundaries. I mean, if you look at uh, most of Africa, the people who go across borders, they have shared yes. language, shared culture. But states have reacted to this in very regressive ways. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a country like South Africa, whose activists, leading activists, were hosted by other nations during the struggle, should have a more progressive uh, way in dealing with such issues, I, I, I believe. But there's lots of different kinds of conflict that is happening at the moment. We see there's a huge conflict in Syria where 200,000 people have been killed. Mm -hmm. There's climate refugees uh, that are, uh, that's because of, of our policies which are leading to increased desertification that's happening. Mm -hmm. There's economic crisis that are, that are going on because of some economic policies which are not benefiting everybody. And this is creating more and more uh, people who are forced to leave their homes. Forced, nobody likes to leave their homes. And, and I think there needs to be a response, a, a very thoughtful, a very principled response to that. And South Africa sh as a, uh, should, should be a natural leader, but it's not yes. in this. Uh, very quickly, before I let you go, Mandeep, we've seen a spate of service delivery protests mm -hmm. across the country. And the deputy president, Cyril Ramaphosa, mm -hmm. puts it eloquently uh, when he said yesterday that the constitutional right to protest must be upheld and mm -hmm. exercised, but this must be done well within the mm -hmm. bounds of the law. But this is not happening in mm -hmm. many of our communities in the country, looting and violence, mm -hmm. of course, becoming the order of the day. How do we start inculcating strong human rights rights, a strong human rights culture and values uh, where people are cognizant of their rights and responsibilities? I mean, I suppose it has to begin with the state itself. Yes. First, the state's response, no matter what the provocation, needs to be just. It needs to be proportionate to the situation. And then, of course, you need to go beyond. You need to go in schools and, and, and you need to educate people in their families and so on. But most importantly, you need to have open, transparent governance where people don't feel frustrated that they, that they are caught in a, dead, in, a, in a dead end, that their lives are so... You can imagine the frustration people must feel to, to turn to violence. That means they have no hope for the future. And all kinds of violence is wrong, but I think it's also important to remember that the state must behave in a principled manner. Thank you, Mandeep, for your time on the PM News Desk. That was Mandeep Tiwana. He's the head of policy and research at Civicus, the World Alliance for um, Citizen Participation.